In this lecture, we're going to talk about C++ operators and control flow. C++ operators allow you to manipulate numbers. You can do things like adding numbers, dividing them, multiplying numbers, and things like that. To really show this off, we're going to create a new project like we did before. We're going to call this 1-7, 1-7 operators data types. We're going to store it in the usual location, D, here, and hit next. It's really the same thing we've been doing before. And we're going to look at different ways you can manipulate your numbers. We're going to get rid of this and define two numbers. Okay, the first one is going to be an integer and it's going to be called A. We're going to assign it a value of 20. The second one is going to be B, and we're going to assign a value of seven, okay? So we can add these two numbers. And uh, the way we're going to do this, we're going to see out and say A plus B equals, and then we're going to output that. And the way you add numbers in C++, you say A plus B like this and we are fine by now. What we're going to see when we run the application is the sum of these two numbers. Let's run the application to see this in action. Tick tack, tick tack. Boom, we have 27. A plus B equals 27. This is good. We should put the space here to make this kind of uh, neat. Now we've done the addition, we're going to subtract numbers. And the way you do that is really the same way. A minus B equals A minus B. We should do the multiplication also. So the multiplication operator is uh, this one, this uh, star. And it's really, and it really is the same thing. And the division 20 divided by 7, it's going to be A divided by B. The division operator is that one. And we can run the application to see this. Tick tack, tick tack, boom, here. Okay, you see A plus B equals 27. A minus B should be 13, which is what we see here. A times B is 140, which is what we are seeing here. And A divided by B is two. Why is it showing two instead of two point something something? And this is because this is an integer number. If you wanted to see the dots after the two, you could do what we call casting in programming languages, which is really taking a variable which is one data type and transform it into another data type. We're going to try that here. And uh, you see here where we show the division of A by B, we can cast this to a float so that we can see the decimal points. And uh, you cast by uh, putting your data type in parentheses in front of what you want to transform. Let's run the application. And now you see that we see A divided by B is two point something. These are the four first operators we're going to see in this lecture. On top of these operators, there's another operator that we call modulus operator, okay? And uh, the operator sign is the percentage sign, and uh, you use it just like this. And what does it do? It really gives you the reminder of a division of these two numbers. For example, we are taking 20 modulus seven. Seven fits into 22 times, and we're going to have a six left. And that is what's going to be returned by this operator. So let's run this and see if it gives us what we want. And you see that it gives us six. So please play with this a little bit so that you understand it more. This is a very important operator, especially when you need to do things like random number generators and things like that. We're going to use that in a few upcoming lectures. To make this uh, a little bit organized, we're going to see out a message that says these are math operators. 
The next type of operators we're going to look at is the logical operators. So we're going to put that down here and uh, call this logical. What we're going to do is to print a message if A is greater than B and print another message if A is less than B. Simple, right? So we say F A greater than B. We print something. And if it's not greater than B, we're going to print something else. So let's do this, see out. A is greater than B. And see out, A is not greater than B. Okay, so let's go to the application, run it again. Mm, it says A is greater than B. And from here, you saw something we've never used before. This is an if statement that you use to test for things. In the parentheses, after the if close, you pass a logical statement usually. And uh, in this case, we are testing to see if A is greater than B. And the if clause you see here is one form of flow control. We are trying to control where our program is going to be. We are saying, if A is greater than B, please execute the code inside this code block. And if it's not, you have to execute the code block inside here. Before we move forward, I'd like to introduce something important I haven't introduced so far, and that is comments in C++. In your source code, sometimes you don't want to execute a piece of code, but you also don't want to delete it. Uh, the way to do that is to use comments, and um, it really is easy. For example, if we want to comment out this block of code, what we could do is uh, put that piece of code inside this thing. See, really? It really is easy. So you put a slash, a star, you type in your comment, and then you end that with the star and slash. Okay, so we can uh, take all this piece of code in here and put it in here. Okay, and if we run the application, we're not going to see these messages anymore. We're only going to see this part here. Let's run the application to prove it. Boom, only A is greater than B. If you wanted to block one single line of code, you could also do that by using two slashes that follow each other. And uh, right now this line is commented out too. If we run the application, we're not going to see this message. Let's run. And you don't see this message here because it is commented out. Okay, so now that we know about comments, let's use them to list out a few other logic operators you can use in C++. You can use the greater than operator. You've seen that you have a less than operator. You can use to test if something is less than something else. You can say A less than B. We have a greater than or equal. We have a less than or equal. And we have an equal sign. Okay, so you can use all these things in your test statements. Okay, for example, uh, we can say if a, why does, oh, I am, oh, I made the mistake in my comment here. So you should really be careful with this. Okay, for example, you can say if a is equal to b, we can do something. And you should be careful to see that this is two equal signs that follow each other. Okay, so let's get rid of this message and say A is equal to B. Equal to B is not equal to B. Run the application. It's going to say A is not equal to B because it isn't. Okay, if we had to change B and uh, make it a 20, Guess what we're going to see? 
a is equal to b. And uh, I hope this shows how you can use uh, logical operators together with if statements to test for things. And by now we've covered a few math operators and logical operators. We've also seen how to use if statements to test your things. The next thing we want to look at is loops and how you can use them to really ease your work down. So let's note this down that we want to work on loops. To show the usage of loops, let's say I'm feeling a little bit egocentric today and I want this program to say my name 20 times. How do I do that? The first way one could do this is to tell it to print my name 20 times like this. And it's going to do that because it, it is loyal, you know. If we run the application, it's going to tell me hello 20 times. I feel important right now. Let's scale this, it's annoying. Uh, but what I want to show you is that you can do these things multiple times, but uh, it really isn't convenient to you. It's ugly when you look at this like this, and uh, there should be a better way to do this. And we're going to introduce a few ways you can do the same thing without repeating the same thing a hundred or a thousand times. The first construct for loops we have in C++ is the for loop. The way you use it, if you wanted to have the same effect as we did by printing Daniel 20 times, we could say for and i equals one, okay, colon, i less than or equal to 20 and say i plus plus. And inside here, Bear with me, I'm going to explain this. We can say, see out, hello, Daniel. Put a space in here and uh, output the number we are at, which is I in this case, and put an end of the line here. Okay, we're going to comment all this out and Qt Creator really gives you a good way to comment something so you can select the entire thing and hit control slash to have it comment things for you. But this is really not beautiful. I don't like it. So I'm going to get rid of this by hitting control Z and instead use block comments to comment this out. Okay. This is a uh, better in my opinion. You can choose whatever you think works better for you. Okay, so we have a loop here. What we have, we want our program to loop 20 times, right? So we tell it to go from one to 20. And when you use a loop, you have to give it a starting point. In our case, it is one and an end point, which is 20 in our case. And you have to provide a way for it to keep incrementing from the start to the end. And in our case, it is this third block here that says increment i by one all the time. I'm sorry, I introduced something I've never talked about before. In here we can say i equals i plus one. Okay, so it really is the same thing. So we are telling the program, start from one and uh, keep incrementing by one, keep adding one and every time when you do that, you have to execute the code in here and you're going to print hello Daniel and uh, print the current value you are at, which is I in this case, and then we're going to end the line. Let's run the application and see if we have the same effect. Mm -hmm. Look here, it's saying hello Daniel 1 to 20. This is good, I like it. So let's go through how this happens a little bit in a little bit more detail. We start by I being equal to one. Okay, so the program tests to see if it's less than equal than 20 and uh, it is. So it's going to jump and execute this line. It's going to say, hello, Daniel, I equal one. And it's going to say, hello, Daniel, one. It's going to increment this after executing this line in here and then come back to the loop. But this time I is going to be two and it's going to be less than equal than 20. We're going to see out, hello, Daniel, two. 
increment this by three and keep going until we hit 20. When we hit 20, we come here, 20 is still less than equal to 20. Okay, this is right. We're going to execute this, hello Daniel, 20, and increment this to 21. When it comes in here, it's no longer true. 21 is not less than equal to 20, and our loop is going to stop here, and we're going to hit this line here. One thing I want you to notice is that to work with a loop, you have to provide the starting condition, an ending condition, the body of the loop, and the increment for the loop to keep going. So play with this and see if you can wrap your brains around it. It really isn't that difficult. You just have to play with it a few times and you're going to understand it. The second construct that we have for loops in C++ is the while loop. And it really works the same way. It's just a different syntax. The way you use it, so let's comment this one because we're going to do this another way. Okay, so we start by declaring int i equals one. Okay, so we say while i is less than equal to 20. Okay, you see our starting condition, our end condition. Inside, we're going to do the body of the loop, which really is the same thing that we have here. So let's copy that and bring it over. And after this, we have to increment i as we had done in the for loop, and we do that here, okay? We end this, and if we run the application, we should see the same thing. Hello, Daniel, from one to 20. Let's run the application. Boom. Hello, Daniel, one through 20. Okay, now we've covered two ways to do loops. There is still one more you need to know about, and that is the do while loop. And it really works the same way. So the first thing we do in that, we also define integer i equal one, like this. And we say do something while a condition is true. Okay, so our condition is still going to be while i is less than equal to 20. To 20. And we're going to put a colon here to end this. Inside, we're going to do the same thing we did in the while loop. Okay. We see out hello Daniel with the current value of i and we increment to keep going up until we hit 20 and our loop is going to stop there. And what this loop allows you to do is to do something before you test the condition. Okay, sometimes you need this and uh, this might come in handy. Let's run the application to see if it works as we want. And here we are, hello Daniel from one to 20. And from now, I hope that you really are familiar with loops. I recommend to play with them. Try to change the number of times you want to print this thing. For example, I want this program to tell me hello 1000 times. And to control the number of prints, you can just change the ending condition and make it up to 1000. It's going to tell me hello 1000 times. If you don't believe me, look at this. Hello, Daniel from one to 1,000. You can even make this 1 million and really keep your program running if you are this crazy. Let's do this. And it's going to keep running, running, and running again. I'm not that patient to wait for this, but I'm going to control C on this to stop the program and I'm going to end it. So I'm going to turn this back to 20 and we are happy right now. I think this covers all we set out to do in this lecture. You know how to use operators. You know how to use F to control the flow of your program. And you also know how to use loops to do repetitive tasks. You may not believe it, by now you have the skills you can use to start writing programs that people would actually start to use. 
And we're going to do that in the next lecture, where you're going to build a small guessing game for you and your friends to have fun with. I'll see you in the next lecture.